the Cathedral of Shadows, where demons gather. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cathedral of Shadows on Megami Tensei Podcast. I am Rosin. I'm Kasu. How's it going? And I'm Velvet, I'm Velvet Blue. <laughs> hey, and I'm Solid Abyss. There we have it. We have guests. This is a post-fab mailbag episode. Yay. Yay. <laughs> well, well, Solid Abyss, you were not, unfortunately, you were not able to be in the fab, but... Since... Yeah, I was quite sad that I couldn't fab. <laughs> yeah. But I was. <laughs> yeah, you were. Yeah, you were the cutoff. Because after that, I got mad at all the tech issues we were having. And decided to call it quits. Um, yeah. So I need, I need so to release some problems. stress. So yeah. now that's why I'm here. Um, I don't want to say too much yeah. about this because we just did it. But like, if we do another fat, it's not going to be the same format. I'm going to have to streamline it because yeah. the first one, the first one went well, but not well on my end. If that makes sense, it was a lot of stress. Um. So I guess we have a lot of news to talk about, uh, some recent, some old. Uh, so first, we should probably talk about, um, oh, well, there's a new forum that just opened up about SMT. It's called DDS uh, Net, and it is a great, great little forum. It's kind of convenient that the uh, Atlas forum is shutting down because this takes its place. Uh, it's only been up for like a week, and there's already quite a few. The Atlas forum is shutting down. I didn't know about that. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, the Atlas forums are shutting down. Um, Why? Basically, because they said everyone who posts here is kind of like they they passively kind of said like everyone who posts here doesn't really post that great of content, and barely anyone posts here anymore. So, <laughs> oh. damn. Yeah, oh. like like it was one of those like really nice like professional like fuck off type statements. <laughs> So they're like, you guys all suck, so leave. Yeah, I, I I gotta imagine though, like that that running a forum is probably like of that size is probably not always the the greatest optimal decision. Yeah, like because that kind of affects your company's image too. At the end of the day, and maybe yeah. they won't clear that up. So, well, everyone can go here now instead. I have an account there. Katsu, do you have an account I, there? Yes, I do. All right. Uh, you two have accounts there. Uh, I, I just heard about to it. Do it. Oh, okay. Well, you guys, yeah. Now, now you can have accounts there because we informed you. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, oh my. Um, also, we we finally learned what the ultrasound teaser was about that we talked about just a few days ago. I'll take it over from here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> turns out. <laughs> Turns out it's turns out it's a dungeon crawling JRPG called Conception Two. You just Conception to talk Two about is Conception about you, you, the player. Yes. Okay. It's about you, the player. You have to go and date these women and have their children, and then you and your children and family go dungeon crawling together. That is Conception Two, coming spring 2014, rated R. No, just kidding. It's not rated R. Um. Yeah. Under that <laughs> I'm. I don't know what to say. That was beautiful. Um, yes, it was pretty beautiful. I just came up with everything on the fly. Anyway, Conception Two is a sequel to a game we never got in the states. So it kind of just came out of nowhere that we were getting it at all. Like I remember waking up one morning, going to Silicon Era, and then I saw Atlas localizing Conception Two. I couldn't believe it. So, the real question is, why didn't they name it Conception 2 Electric Boogaloo? The correct... Well, the, I don't know. Should have. Probably because, the, probably because the title of the first game was kind of... Yeah. It was called Conception. Please have my baby. <laughs> Can I have wow. multiple babies? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty much what it was called. That, that was the first one. That sounds really like a really, really nice way to say, like, I want to have sex with you. Hey, please have yes. my baby. Please, just it's like a really formal, nice way of putting it. This is like combining Etrian Odyssey and Persona. Yeah, like all in so one. 
Instead of summoning personas, you're summoning your child. <laughs> <laughs> what if one of them you get like 10,000 babies coming out of nowhere and just attack the enemy? Now, are the babies expendable? This is all I care about. Like, do I have to treat no. all of them as I would my actual children, or can I just form yes, legions of them to like zerg rush the enemies? <laughs> You have to, you have to treat. <laughs> treat the world with most respect. Oh my like, god! The whole premise for this game is ridiculous as is. <laughs> but it sounds fun as hell. Do you, do you want to talk? Yeah, I played. I played the first conception, and it was alright. <laughs> oh my god! Do you do you want to move on now, or do we want to talk about baby making more? I I yeah, can I go either way. <laughs> um. All right. Well. Um, some other, oh, yeah. Okay, some other news that really isn't news, but no one's talking about it. Um, Quantum Devil Quantum S- Devil Saga. Yes. <laughs> this novelization of the Digital Devil Saga games. Oh, gotta oh, stop man. you there. Okay, so this is how I'm gonna make this comparison, and I know probably nobody, negative five people watching this are gonna get this comparison, but the Gundam novelization. Um, if anyone knows that of the original Gundam series, that's what Quantum Devil Saga is. It's the original plot of the series as the original writer wanted it, but it wasn't what the final product was. So basically, this is a director's cut. Starter. Director's cut. The true canon of, of Digital Devil Saga. The canon that came from the creator's mouth. Yes. That kind of canon. Yeah. It's going to be more metal. Probably. Yes. Well, okay, so the story behind it is the original writer for Digital Devil Saga got sick when uh, the game was in pre-production, so he couldn't assist with the rest of the story. So Atlas, other people at Atlas took over for the rest of the story. But he was the one who designed the character, or not designed, but he he made the characters, their personalities and whatnot, and the premise. And then everyone else took over from there. So it's the same premise, but a different story. Yes. I bet it's going to be going to be even more metal (laughs) probably (laughs) it's gonna be so fucking hardcore i hope that'd be that'd be great i see i wonder if like all like the same like plot twists and endings and stuff are gonna be the same or like because i have a feeling this guy was in the hospital or whatever being sick then he got to the end of the first game and he's like they did what with my premise or something (laughs) like that so he decided to write the books why is everything the matrix (laughs) Spoilers. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, spoilers. Well, they they could have just thought that meant, like, slow motion everywhere. So, okay, I'm going to stop trying to justify my terrible, terrible spoiling habits. Um, but anyways, it, this is also getting an English translation. Yeah, uh, English translation of publication. That's pretty weird. I mean... Yeah, um, it's by a group called Bento Books, and uh, they seem really small, but they're um, this publishing company that translates uh, a bunch of Japanese import novels, and Quantum Devil Saga Volume 1 is going to be one of them, and I'm really not sure why they decide to pick it up, but it's awesome that they are, because now we can read it. Yeah, they are. We should, yeah, definitely stop by your local bookstores and pick this book up. Whenever Start reading, out. kids. Yes. Yes, whenever it's out. <laughs> I wish I could yeah. read more uh, often. I'll definitely buy it. I'm buying it. <laughs> All right. So I think that's enough about Quantum Devil Saga. So probably what everyone is surprised we didn't start talking about already, Persona. Persona. Ev- yes. <laughs> so... Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're um, gonna take. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not angry anymore because of what I just thought of. But okay, hold on. Go ahead. Sorry. Let, okay. Um, <laughs> before we get into the clusterfuck of news we just got in the past two hours as of recording, um, <laughs> the first thing, um, Persona Three movie is coming out twenty third, which I think is this Saturday. Yeah. So Something that's like that. that's coming out this Saturday. I have a calendar on my computer. Oh. Wow. Yes, it is a Saturday. Okay. I have a calendar on my wall to say Persona 3 must must watch. (laughs) Gonna go all the way to Japan. (laughs) Yes. I'm gonna fly to Japan and watch this movie. BRB guys going to Japan to watch a possibly terrible anime adaptation of a game I like. (laughs) Time well spent. Well, actually, I think I saw a GIF on Tumblr basically 
feature the protagonist on a motorcycle while putting the evoker yes. to his head. Yes, that's from, the, that's from the recent Personas on motorcycles. <laughs> Personas on motorcycles. Personas on motorcycles. Oh. Personas on motorcycles. <laughs> I'm really I'm really depressed. Like I, I saw that at the end. I like that trailer up to that point and I was like Yeah. Really? Everything <laughs> everything about that trailer was great until that point where it was just like personas on motorcycles. Okay. Now I have the feeling this movie is going to be pretty bad. So, okay, well, here's the thing. So I thought of it at first. I'm like, that is the cheesiest thing ever. Then I thought, wait a second. But now the motorcycle has a purpose. Motorcycle never had a purpose in the game. That's good. And then I'm like, no, I'm just denying. Yeah, denial. The fact that, yeah, I'm in denial that this movie is probably going to be really awkward compared to the source. Um, still hoping it's enjoyable. <laughs> Um, but... I'm not hoping it's enjoyable. It's oh. gonna be garbage. I, I don't know. I I, I want to see like see it in the movie before I can say anything. Yeah. Because it, it might be good for all we know. You know, like I hope uh, okay. it might be half decent. <laughs> like compared to their their uh, past few adaptations, I really hope they learned like the feedback they got from those. Hopefully, they apply it to Persona Three the movies. I hope. <laughs> I, I don't know. hope. Yeah, um, so do we want to get into the clusterfuck of news? That we yeah, get, get, get to the clusterfuck, all right. <sighs> oh my god, so it's I'm going to take this from the beginning. Earlier this week, and I think possibly even before um, we did episode 10, someone found out that on November 24th, the domain site for the reveal, uh, the reveal site and what whatnot, is going to... What's called? Um, what's called Persona5.jp, I believe. No, it's going to turn into Persona5.jp. Like, it'll redirect there oh, okay. um, this it'll Sunday. So everyone was thinking for the past couple of days, oh, shit, Persona 5 basically confirmed. Um, until a couple hours ago. Um, where three... T- oh, well. Where a couple, a couple hours ago, Silicon Era reported that the site had updated with three teddies filling the um, images. Yes, and they're each making a different expression. Um, and if you pair up the expressions, they shake, and then uh, all three of the expressions random randomize again. Um, yeah, which is strange. Um, and someone apparently, I, I saw this on Reddit. A few people digged around the uh, site tags. Uh, one of them being P four U two, which led people to believe, oh, because it features Teddy. And it has that tag. It could be about Persona 4 Arena Suplex Hold. So then people were getting kind of bummed about that. Uh, and I think literally 30 minutes ago, um, I think, uh, w- was it the English VA or the Japanese VA? English. Okay, yes. Yeah, so, Japanese voice. So, it was English? Uh, Karen Strassman. That's, that's, that's the English voice actor. Yeah. Oh, Karen Strassman. Okay, yeah. So, oh, I'm, Karen Strassman. She yes. just got real. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um so yeah, on her um Karen Strassman's um uh, what you want to call it? It's like her like portfolio of like list of things she's done. Um two things appeared which look really fishy. One of them is like Golden 2 Persona 4 or something really awkwardly worded like that. And the other one is um Persona 4 Arena or no, Persona 4 Volume 2. Um so now we have three conflicting pieces of evidence about what the reveal site is about, and Katsu, I like your theory about this, so why don't you explain it's it? Pro- what I'm thinking is it's probably a portal website, not exactly a redirect all on itself, which will redirect to Persona 4 Ultimax Ultra Suplex Hold. This supposed Persona 4 Volume 2 or Golden 2 Persona 4, and then the last redirect will take us to Persona 5. I like that theory. Yeah, yeah, I like it too. So does that mean like, why would there be three teddies there? And yeah, they do kind of make like, and the image itself is like, the background around Teddy is still like boxed off. There's still crosses there. Yeah. So those crosses could be filled up with like a thumbnail of which site you want to go. And there's still the cities down there. We have no idea what those cities are there for. So it's just a little strange to say the least and all of this is supposed to be revealed um at 20 hundred hours so that's um eight o'clock 8 p.m yeah 8 p.m so eight in the morning eastern time in america is when the reveal site will be unveiled oh man 
<laughs> too early for me. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it's it's really weird to see what this is going to be. Um, like, I don't know. Everyone's been flipping their shit. I think that's the only yeah. real way to describe it. There's a lot of mixed reactions. Everyone, some people are happy. Some people are pissed. I was very, very upset until I had this little conclusion in my head. But if it does turn out to just be a Persona 4 sequel, I'm going to be like Angry Joe and just make an 8 a.m. angry rant and be just really, really upset the entire I feel, time. I feel like no matter what, someone's going to be pissed off when the reveal happens. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes, of course. That's the internet. Yeah. Oh, man. So that's... Uh, that's great. <laughs> um, I'm going to laugh if it's like Shin Megami Tensei Five. They just put the Persona logo <laughs> there and like the teddy is there to fuck with everyone. <laughs> but... The fact that Karen Strassman had posted this in a resume makes me believe maybe this next Persona title, well, if it's Persona 4 Volume 2 or Persona 4 Golden 2 or whatever, maybe it's going to get an international release. Or like maybe it's being made by an American company, like Activision. Oh, oh fuck that. It's gonna be <laughs> oh, my God. Call of Nanako. With, call of Nanako with microtransactions. Oh, yes. It, it's going to be just like how Silent Hill got better as soon as the Japanese developers handed it over to the American developers, right? Guys? Yes. Yeah, those games skyrocketed. <laughs> those games did, did those games did so well. Yeah, like Origins, Homecoming. Yeah. Really good. Um, anyone else have anything to add? What about this clusterfuck? <laughs> uh, I, I don't want Persona 4. <laughs> don't want any I'm, more I'm Persona I'm done. I think so everybody's first. done with Persona 4. See, We've had enough of Persona 4 for the last five years. So, See, Persona 4 is like... It's like Metal Gear Solid. No one wants any more Metal Gear Solid after 4. 4 finished everything. But then they keep coming out with stuff, but it keeps being good. And yeah, I, yeah. I, I feel like that's the same issue with like Persona. Because like, it's like, dude, do we really need a, like a, a handheld port like a few years after it came out? Oh, but it's really good. Oh, okay. Do we really need a fighting game spinoff? Oh, but it's really good. Oh, okay. Like, it's really hard because, like... It's really hard because games turn out to be really good, they're really always strong, good. and really powerful. <laughs> but have you guys noticed something odd? It's been five years since Persona 4 came out. Five days before the site reveal that they show the teddies. Oh, uh, Half-Life 3 confirmed. Persona 5 confirmed. <laughs> what if the reveal site was for Half-Life 5? Oh, Yo, my God. If something like that Dude. does happen, I would flip my shit. No, I... <laughs> Oh, I understand it all now. The first one, the first box is for Persona 5, okay? The second box is for Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 4. The third <laughs> is for Half-Life 3. Oh, I cracked amazing. it. I cracked it. It all makes code. sense. <laughs> Who would have thought that Gabe Newell would be working with Atlas this entire time? That <laughs> sly bastard, he. <laughs> I think we need to move on to emails before someone gets hurt. Yes. Okay, so... <laughs> Let's move the emails. All right. This first one is from Automatic, and he says, Hey, guys, I'm a fan from the Dominican Republic. I really like your podcast. I almost died of laughter on the 7.5 episode. So did I, and I recorded it. <laughs> it's very entertaining, and keep at it. Thank you. Uh, so I have three... Thanks. And he says, So I have three questions that uh, I want to ask. What has been your biggest fusion failure? Um, hmm. Start off with that one, I guess. Well, I've already said it. Mine was Hooligan. Yeah, that was the biggest fusion failure I've See, ever done. I don't remember any like really really bad ones. Uh, I think I tried doing a special fusion in Persona Three where you needed to fuse like four demons to get or four personas together to make something, and I think it screwed up and I was really mad because I wasted a bunch of yen on the compendium. But aside mm -hmm. from that, I really don't remember. <laughs> yeah, mine was just Hooligan. Hooligan, it's terrible. Yeah, I think that I got very few fusion failures when I played the SMT games, so <laughs> I can't really remember any. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> okay. Um, second question. Uh, who do you think, uh, or what do you think they'll do about voice actors for uh, SMT Crossfire Emblem? Um, that's tough. I don't. 
I don't really know about Nintendo's policy for voice actor reprisal, but most of uh, um, the actors in Atlas titles are non-union, while the actors in Fire Emblem titles are union. So, chances are this will be a union project, and since Nintendo is a union company, they'll probably get everyone back, because that's how it works. It's pretty complicated. See, yeah, I, I have no clue, because... I could see this game totally just not having voice acting at all as well. Um, yeah. I think that make people mad, but at the same time, you you never know. I have a feeling they would do voice acting because, well, yeah, most of the Fire Emblem games, well, not most of the Fire Emblem games, the recent Fire Emblem games do have voice acting. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't mind it if, like, it was all in Japanese or whatever. That'd be fine with me, but I, I don't know how like the union and stuff work with a crossover. Yeah. 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 Here. <laughs> okay. Um. Then last question. Uh, what has been the saddest moment in an SMT game? Hmm. Oh man. Yeah, SMT. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um. The most I cried was Shinji's death, despite knowing it was coming through being a spoiler hound. <laughs> That that seems pretty good. Um, yeah, that one was pretty good. The 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 uh, well, I guess um, God, I'm just gonna have to probably put spoilers in the description because spoiled Digital Devil Saga's ending. <laughs> now we're talking about all the saddest moments. Anyways, um, I'm gonna probably have to go with when the Chaos Hero kills the Law Hero in SMT One. I had no idea that was gonna happen, and I felt kind of bad because I named them after like real people I knew, and I'm like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> so the saddest moment for me in the mainline SMT is to say hmm guess it will have to be um, doesn't have to be mainline by the way uh, doesn't have to be mainline yeah hmm because he, he states that his was Cielo's death in uh, Digital Devil Saga 2 that death was pretty sad but I'll have to say when well Makoto slash Minato dies in Persona 3 and then Persona 3 Fest happens and everyone's edgy. <laughs> There's that. that that's actually yeah. mine too. Persona 3's ending is probably mine. Okay. I was I was spoiled. Happened. I was spoiled by that in the stupidest way possible because Persona 4 Arena had just come out. Like it was literally the second day it was out and I was still playing I think I was still playing Persona 3 at the time, was I? I'm not sure. I might have been, but um Oh no no it was it was pre-release because we were watching trailers, um we were watching trailers for Persona 4 Arena and stuff because me and my friends are into fighting games, and I was like I don't get why they don't have the Persona 3 guy in here, and my friend just goes like, no no delay because he's dead I'm like oh thanks good friend, <laughs> so coldly yeah he died I know. he died it. <laughs> well like he said Did so he matter know? of factly like everyone knows I'm like oh thanks. Wait, yeah, like, everyone does know. That you were That's playing? common knowledge. <laughs> like, did he did he knew that you were playing? Yeah, <laughs> yes, he did. Oh, damn. He just assumed I knew, which, to be fair, I spoil myself on everything. So, yeah. I, in there fact, it is. like, I think the only SMT or Mega Ten game I have not been spoiled, like I played through to like completely blind, was SMT One. <laughs> so. Oh. Because, like, yes. uh, I don't really blame him, I guess. Yeah. Because Persona 3 has been out for, like, I think almost fucking 10 years now or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so. It's been out since, um, when did the first Persona 3 anything It was, like, 2003 out? or 4 it was, or 4 or something. No, it was 2005 and 2006. So it's been out, it's been, like, 8 years. Uh, close enough. It's still, it's still been a while. Yeah. <laughs> um... Okay, this one's from Jake. He was the he he was a fapper from last episode. Uh, he actually oh. provided the title for the episode. Um, so if you ever considered buying a Mara figurine, that was all him. Um, yeah. Anyways, he asks. Um, he says, "Big big fan of Cathedral of Shadows. Uh, which which SMT game was the hardest or had the most bullshit in it?" Um, um probably Nocturne. Nocturne. Yeah, from what I from what I've played of both, I think Strange Journey is slightly harder. And from what 
I hear Strange Journey gets up like ridiculous towards the end. Um, aside from that, yeah, probably probably either Nocturne, Strange Journey. A few people say Digital Devil Saga two gets really hard, but I have no experience mm. with that. I, it was um, it was hard, but I don't think it's the hardest. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that bad. It definitely wasn't that bad. It like, wasn't like you played Nocturne. Yeah. yeah, after you played Nocturne, that's um, Digital Devil Saga two was kind of a walk in the park. Okay. Uh, Velvet Blue, what do you think? Well, honestly, I kind of breezed through uh, my first playthrough of Persona 4 because I put it on easy mode like I do on all games, but I'm not sure. I've had more encountering hard parts than the whole game being hard for me. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I try to play smart, so <laughs> most of the time it ends up being a breeze. Understandable. Um, okay. So thank you, Jake, for that question. Um, all right, this this one's apostrophe man again. Uh, and, oh, cool. <laughs> uh, they have only one question. Um, if for some reason all the characters of SMT, Persona, Devil Survivor, etc., uh, came to our world, who do you think will suffer the most, and who would have a good time? Um, well, the Persona characters will probably be the most natural in our world. Um, he. Yeah. he he adds that um, he thinks all the female characters would have a pretty bad time, especially Fuka, because she'd be bullied by real-life New Jersey girls. Oh, God. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. oh, man. I, I don't know. Like, Devil Survivor and Persona people are probably going to be pretty okay. Uh, well, yeah. I, I think um, Tetsuya from Persona 2 would probably have a annoying and depressing time. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's like a third time. <laughs> oh, poor Tetsuya. Yeah, that's like the third time, which I won't spoil anything in case if people hadn't played, but it's like <laughs> trying a new life again. You got fucked over. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like... Eh, I keep switching suck. worlds, what's going on? <laughs> Damn it. Uh, what's going on here? will have a hard time. I mean, they came from worlds filled with cannibalism and bloodshed and civil war, too, so... Yeah, like, I think a yeah. left... I think a left wouldn't, like... Because Demi Fiend and... All the other protagonists I'm thinking of, like, they kind of start off as high school students, or at least you with, like, um, Flynn does. Um, yeah. Aleph starts off as a gladiator that's pretty much, like, bred to, like, kill things. I don't think he's going to be able to adjust to a regular society <laughs> very well. <laughs> I, I think something that would be humorous is probably Flynn coming over because he's all like samurai and stuff he'd be, and be he'd like, be like what is all this <laughs> he'd be such as a samurai skill yeah no like he'd be stealing things and then like yeah i got five star artifact or something people are just gonna be like what the fuck are you doing get out of my house <laughs> yeah or even like it's just a calculator or something if he steals <laughs> like he'll go that, into that, the subway he's like where's all the item shops <laughs> yeah i think that'd be the most funniest <laughs> Oh man, that would that would be pretty hilarious. He'd probably get arrested fairly quickly. Uh, <laughs> yes. They didn't try to kill them because they think they're enemies, like in the uh, the overworld. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, thank you, Apostrophe Bad, for that question. Um, ooh, this one's uh, this one's from Markle, uh, and they have quite a nice um. Quite a nice add-on to that last one, um, unintentionally. Um, if you lived in a Shin Megami Tensei post-apocalyptic universe, which one would you, and why? Um, that's hard. Yeah, because they're all pretty shitty. They all suck. <laughs> like, to live in forever, I think. Like, I want to live in Digital Devil Saga's worlds. No, it can't, like, post-apocalyptic. Yeah, like, it ha I oh. think it has to have gone to shit already. Um, yeah. Well, does endings count, or does the game have to be in post-apocalyptic? Uh, I'd go, I'd go either. Like, cause some of the endings, yes, are still post-apocalyptic, so I'd say that those would count. Um, probably. I'd like to be around uh, Devil Survivor One. I'd say mm. Nocturne as Demi Fiend or something like that. I would probably go with, like, after SMT1, there's, like, that little 50-year period of peace between that and SMT2. I think that would be the least harmful. 
So the path of least resistance. Yeah, I'll go with S and T one. Yeah. Choose the path of least resistance. Well, I mean, like SMT one, if you survive that like initial flood that kills pretty much everyone in the population, I think you're fine. After that, yeah, yeah. Actually, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind being an SMT four because I could revive myself. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you just gotta make bank. Yeah, you just gotta make some money. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I get some point oh, I just had the best idea ever. <laughs> no, I just had the best idea ever. Someone should make a mod for Papers, Please, where you play a Sharon. <laughs> Do you have money? Do you have play coin? No, get out. Yeah. <laughs> no, then stand in line. Glory to Underworld. Oh, that would be great. Um, okay, second question. What is your favorite High I'm Daisy comic? Oh, I really like... Hmm... The Holy Bible of the Persona fandom, the High I'm Daisy comic book series. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. This might uh, be cheating. Uh, you oh, you go first. All right then. Uh, my favorite is um, yeah. You say I uh, like dudes. Oh yes. Uh, <laughs> you say it not like. I have dudes. to go. With, I have to go with the Ryoji Ventures. Those are pretty cool. That's my second. My my. Okay. If if we're talking strictly Mega Ten related, yes, that is my favorite. If we're going with um everything that she's ever done uh i i'm gonna have to go with the mother three comic because that is the best thing ever um yeah i don't know honestly for myself i kind of like all of her works especially for the persona 4 and ryoji adventures of course yeah we should try getting her on the podcast Ooh, she's she's Damn. More than done with Persona. I doubt she'll respond to being yeah. on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Her level of done with Persona is, like, so high right now. <laughs> All right. I guess that is it for those questions. Um, oh, my. Yeah. Uh, this one is from Yamato Takeru. Um, oh. And it says, You disappoint me, Rosin, with reading over my past email you thought... There was no question, so I must ask it again. This is in all capitals. Out of all the SMT games that have gotten a remake, which was the most well-made? Forgive the all caps, please. Um, now another question. Which non-SMT RPG is your favorite? Uh, and the other neutral member they meant was Frost Ace, but it, can't, it can be whatever we want it to be. I think that's referring to something we said last episode, or a few episodes back that I don't remember. Um, also, make sure to let Mastema know we neutral demons are watching him carefully. Uh, and he also included a um, Fifty Shades of Yamato book cover. Oh, cool. Um, Interesting. Yes. Um, so, which SMT remake was done the best? Let's see. Hmm. Persona 3 PSP, I guess? Sure. Like it's hard to it's hard to tell where you where to draw the line from remake to port. Port. Yeah. Mm. Like, I guess like mm, yeah, because that's hard. I, I, yeah, I consider that a remake personally. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> like I like the enhanced port of Persona Two and Persona One. Even though I don't like Persona One, I do appreciate the enhanced port that Atlas tried to do. I mean, it added a lot of stuff and. and all that jazz. It completely changed the soundtrack to some J-pop. Um, I have like two answers for this. The first one is uh, the first one I can't really defend because I haven't played it. But apparently, the the mobile remake of SMT If adds a bonus prologue chapter where you play as the villain before he goes batshit crazy, and that always re- sounds really interesting to me. Um, but I haven't played it, so I can't really vouch for its quality offhand. Um, but from personal experience, I really like Devil Survivor Overclocked in comparison to the original game, just because it makes physical builds not shit, um, yeah. and stuff like that, so. Honestly, I haven't played many remakes, so I'll have to say Persona 4 Golden to me is the better, or the best one I've played so far. All right. Um, also, which non-SMT RPG is your favorite, is the second mm-hmm. question. Um, oh, well. I don't really have a. F- 
I don't have a favorite. There's a lot of RPG series that I like, but I can't say which one is my favorite. Oh, that's easy for me. Uh, Mother 3 with Earthbound being a close second. Those games have, like, changed who I am as a person. Not because of, like, the games themselves, but everyone I've met through those games and, like, all the situations I've had from those games. Like, wow, those games, like, are kind of part of who I am today. So I have to say those. Hmm. Yeah, I can't really decide. There's... Dragon Quest, there's F, there's Final Fantasy, there's the Tales series, there's yeah. Disgaea, there's Fire Emblem, there's Persona, there's, well, can't really count Persona, but yeah, yeah, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot. There's Pokemon. I can't really, I can't really say, but if I do have to choose one, it would probably be the Tales series a lot due to what Rosin said. I did meet a lot of interesting people and made some new friends throughout playing the Tales games and found out that I had a lot in common with certain people. And, yeah. Well, I have to say my favorite, aside from SMT, can be either, of course, Pokemon or the Tales series. Um, For me, it's kind of hard to say, I guess. Because some series kind of just died out on me lately. <coughs> Final but, Fantasy. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I used to be a huge Final Fantasy fan. Everyone was. Uh, but, Everyone was until Final Fantasy XIII <laughs> happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like the games I do play now are like Fire of them, Etrian Odyssey, Pokemon, Rune Factory, things like that. Uh, so it's kind of oh, hard for me Factory to say. Games. Those games are awesome. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're super good. But uh, yeah, oh, Dragon's Dogma, I guess that's another one. But I can't really name one. Um, I guess that's it. I'm reading over Yamato Takeru's email so I don't fuck up again or else he'll be mad at me more. Um, I'll probably put an image up of uh, his, his um, Fifty Shades of Yamato. Fifty Shades of Yamato? Yeah, book cover that he has up there um, while we're reading this email. Um, but now we're done, so... Let's see who emailed us next. Thank you, Yamato Takeru. Um, yes. Also, um, learn how to spell better when you're editing the COS wiki. I, I demand the toppest of quality, and you're, you're not yes. you're not living up to my standards. Anyways, um, okay, uh, okay. So this is from Jesus, guy who sent Katsu the mic. Yes. Um, so he just hopped on eBay to see the going price for the Rido games, and the first prices sorted, or and the f- first things sorted by price turned out to be Yaoi Dojinshi. Dojinshi. Um, oh God. Uh, then he says, "I think they'll still be there if you search Devil Summoner Rido price lowest first. Uh, he just lasts his ass off because the covers all uh, look like some kind of homosexual fru- fruit." Basket. What did he say? What did he say? I'm about to search it right now. Rido. Uh, Devil Summoner Rido. Uh, price lowest first. Summoner Rido. <laughs> okay. You, you, Devil Summoner Rido and price lowest first. Yeah. Um, it, he's, he's, the he's, lowest first? Sort. Uh, yeah. Lowest first. Are you finding okay. it? <laughs> um. I found Rido for Kuzanova for Solus Army, he, King Abaddon. He, he, um, he said it. He said it looked like gay fruits basket from the cover. Oh, oh, I found it. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. Fruity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's no question. It was just that. Um, yeah. He he titled the email um, Rido Mai. So. <laughs> okay. So you're gonna have to send the link. For that, so we can include it on the podcast, unless it's that bad, in which case we can't. That's no, not that bad. Okay, okay. okay. We'll, we'll have that up on the screen, too, um, for all of you to enjoy. Um, okay, then sent a second email. Uh, he says he doesn't really do the shipping thing either. That said, that was, there was a, once upon a time... Oh, no. He says, that said, it was once upon a time my thing. My site from the late 90s still exists, but I won't tell you the subject or or the site out of shame. 
I will say this. I hosted my own and a few others fan fiction there, and I ran two web rings. Oh, God. Yes. That's legit. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Jesus. Um, <laughs> thanks for both emails. Um, I guess next question is from Bruce. They say, hello, I comment on Game of AQs, but not terribly often. I am a big fan of all the SMT games, but most of all, I am a fan of Devil Summoner. The one Devil Summoner that has never received an English localization is the 1995 SMT Devil Summoner for the Sega Saturn. I have heard that it was originally considered for localization for the Saturn than on the PSP, but has never made it out. It would make sense to localize it or give it an enhanced port like Soul Hacker since it is the last remaining title from the 32-bit era that has not been localized outside of the PS1 SMT ports. <sighs> what is your opinion of... Uh, on this do you see the original devil summoner as something that could possibly get a 3ds port despite it being rejected previously i am close to breaking down and just buying the japanese saturn version and just slowly make my way through it also if you know of a fan translation of it it would be appreciated as well thank you uh bruce on game faqs um hmm, well bruce on game F faqs um if they do release an updated port of soul uh, devil summoner um well, I don't really know like how Devil Summoner compared to Soul Hackers, but if it's, it's like, more it's, dated. Th it's more dated than Soul Hackers, just by oh. a tiny bit, though. Just by a tiny bit. Well, chances are they might bring it over here if they make it, if they enhance it in a way that it stacks up to Soul Hackers. Yeah, it's um, it has that really '90s feel going on, kind of like Soul Hackers does. Um, just because um, Devil Summoner kind of wanted to go for a more grounded uh, mystery type thing uh, with yeah. demons involved. Um, the antagonist looks really cool. Uh, the antagonist is a preacher named Sid Davis that summons Bible or that summons demons out of a Bible, which is hilarious and awesome. Um, I kind of I kind of hope that a fan translation comes out, but I kind of I'd say this has even less of a chance of coming over than SMT One and Two do. To be completely honest, um, just because we already have soul hackers, and I think for the majority of people, that's enough. So, yeah, want to play it though? Uh, I don't know. I might just. <laughs> I, I never. I'm not really too interested in it. So, understandable. Yeah, I haven't really looked too much into it either, so <laughs> I can't really weigh in. Apparently, I, I've heard a rumor, I don't remember where I heard this, but apparently the PSP version, or the remake of it, had to be built from the ground up, ground up or like they had to emulate the Saturn game because they lost the source code. Um, and if that's true, that could make it a lot harder to um, localize. Do an enhanced port of. Yeah, again. So, so it's kind of like the same deal with Kingdom Hearts, uh, the original Kingdom Hearts Masters. They lost all of that. Ouch. Okay, so to rebuild the game for the ground up. <laughs> um, oh my, uh, we have an email from Stephen who called us um, drunkenly last fap, but the recording crashed. Failed. Well, it, no, it, it it was working. Then it, Skype crashed mysteriously when he left the call, um, and it was lost. Stephen, Stephen hacked into your computer. Probably, I'm scared. Um, but anyway, Steven says, Humanity is currently in grave danger. Demons of legend from ages past have awakened from their long slumber. Soon they will overrun the earth. In order to complete, er, in order to compete with the demons and fight for our survival, we will need to utilize their power. Use this program correctly, and you should be able to. I pray that those with the courage to use it will accept it, to fight the demons that would destroy us and to preserve humanity. Except there's no program attached, so I guess we're fucked. Yeah, yeah, we're screwed. There's no demon summoning program. Yeah. Well, I'm dead. <laughs> Same here, apparently. Um, oh, this is a repeat. Um, this is a repeat question. This is from uh, Pyro that um, tapped with us. And this email is basically the same um, American culture, like bringing demons into that, that he asked. So I guess we can oh. skip that one. Oh, th this is from someone that tapped with us. Um, <laughs> oh, this is a good question. It's from Game Rectangle. Um, oh, demons have 
came to your city and you have four non-main character SMT characters to help you survive, who do you choose and why? Non-main character SMT characters? Yes. Um, Probably Hope from SMT4, because he seemed like he'd be a pretty swell guy who helped out in this terrible situation. Um... <laughs> don't have any any three more yeah um i need three more the rest of them kind of suck <laughs> and okay so i'm gonna say atsuro because he's a total bro and would stay with me no matter what i do if devil survivor one is to be believed um second second person i'd probably go with um oh shoot what's the guy commander gore from strange journey because he is a military badass Oh, yeah. I, I go with him, too. I forgot all about him. Um, hmm. Three. Uh, probably... Three? I probably had Joe. Joe from Devil Survivor 2. Okay, my my third would be the heroine from, uh, from SMT1, simply because she kicks ass and is neutral and stuff. And then four would probably be Fuka, because I need someone to make fun of while I have to survive. <laughs> and gasp about the enemies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, exactly. <laughs> I need I need someone to tell me when I knocked everyone down. Mm. Now you guys need to come up with four. Yeah, yeah. come up with four. Hmm. Uh, I guess I'll go then. Um, Atsuro, because he's a pro, like you said. Yes. Naoya, because he seems to know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. Um... <laughs> uh, Yukiko, because I want a waifu. <laughs> <laughs> and Kanji, to just beat everything up for me. Okay, with the folding chair. <laughs> the yes. folding chair. Let's see here. Well, I definitely like to have Yukiko, that white mage, red mage ability there. Kanji is basically my close combat fighter. Maybe have uh, Makoto from... Or that... Uh, Military chick from Devil Survivor 2 would yeah. be kind of nice. Yeah, Makoto. Yeah. And maybe... I'd like uh... to redo my list. <laughs> Wait your turn, damn it! Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, I'm trying to remember... Uh, I'm trying to remember the computer chick from Devil Survivor 2 as my support. Uh, oh, Fumi. Fumi. Fumi, that's it. So yeah, that'd be my four. Okay. Katsu, you I can need to... redo your list now. I need to have three. Ba- I need to have three badasses and a woman. I end up falling in love with when it's just us <laughs> two left. All right. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to have Joe from Devil Survivor Two. Of course, you got to have Joe wherever you go. Um, Hope SMT Four. Um, for the chick, it would have to be. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, it would be Haru from Devil Survivor One, and then for the last guy, it would be Adachi. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. A dodge. Yeah, dude, what, what if it's just NTR your wife? <laughs> <laughs> I would I would I would not trust a dachi. So. Yeah, I wouldn't you either. Could trust, you could trust a dachi. <laughs> okay, if you say so. Especially with the chicken in the group. <laughs> Good at NTR your wife, dude. <laughs> the NTR is strong within this group. <laughs> Oh. Okay, then forget it, Dachi. I'll choose Dojima. Eh, better. <laughs> he'll be he'll be extra cranky because he doesn't have a Dachi to give him coffee. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Thanks, game rectangle. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> moving on before I have to listen to any more of this bullshit. Uh, John says, "Hey guys, I love your podcast. I never would have guessed that there's anyone else as obsessed with the Mega Ten series as I am." Oh. Yes, we exist. Um, we, we exist. Uh, any- we are. <laughs> yes, we are. Anyway, I'm the manager for the SMT Devil Summoner Soul Hackers Facebook page. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. They have two SMT related questions. One, do you think demons live in their world just as we do? In some games during demon negotiation, a lot of the demons talk about stuff like girlfriends, food, and even demon school. They even have their own personalities. Do you think that life in their world is similar to ours? Uh, if it does, then 
that supports Tayama's theory that demons and humans can coexist. But one thing that makes me doubt this is the fact that demons have powers humans don't. And Strange Journey, when a demon asks if you're a kidnapper, if you say you're internationally wanted, the demon will tell you that it is nothing compared to what it, what things or how things go on in their world. Uh, but they want to hear our opinions. Uh, hmm. I don't know. They're probably there probably is a demon world that has some level of civilization, but it's... Oh, there is. It's a... I th- well, yeah. Okay. I think it's more so... Yeah, it's pretty much like... The demon world is pretty much like the chaos route. How things will end up if you go chaos. Um, cause in... That's how I feel. That's I... how I feel the demon world is. Uh, in SMT2, you go to where the demons come from, and it's called Makai, also known as the Abyss, also called, like, as a something in Strange Journey. Um... Basically, it's hell, uh, and there's there's like civilization, but yeah, everything's pretty chaotic there. So kind of, sort of, but not really. I, I highly doubt any of them go to school. I really highly yeah. doubt any of them go to school. But um, it's just it's lies and slander. Uh, John made a pretty awesome picture though, um, about who he thinks all of like what demons would be, what type of person in high school, which I will post in the video. So. Well, I think they like can coexist, and that I imagine they kind of live like humans. Only it's all chaotic and crazy, like super ghetto. So basically, <laughs> That's how I see it. So basically, Africa. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's how I see it. So, so newsflash: we have some more persona-related news that just came in not too long ago. Oh my god. Get the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's Atlas is reviving the Persona magazine next month. You guys remember the Persona magazine that came out oh, like I have no idea what the hell that like, is. Carry on. It was like <laughs> around the time where they revealed Persona 4 Golden and Persona 4 Arena. They released a Japanese magazine called the Persona magazine and one of my friends he had uh, got a subscription, imported the entire thing and scanned uh the magazine so it seems like it's making a return the magazine had like information on persona 4 arena persona 4 golden and all all that stuff it's interesting that they're bringing the magazine back especially when the reveal is like five days away yeah. so yeah something important is really happening to the persona universe if they're bringing this magazine back that's pretty cool persona yes. zero <laughs> <laughs> oh oh our- my god there's going to be, like, if there's, like, if this news keeps up, we're going to be having so many, so many episodes <laughs> between now and the reveal site. No, actually, we'll probably just wait till the reveal site's done with, because I think we're sick of this bullshit. Yeah. Um, just tell us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Damn you, Atlas. Anyways, um, and John has a second question. Uh, is there any chance that uh, we will see more third-party characters as demons in future SMT games? I loved how Dante was a Nocturne and that SMT is getting a crossover to the Fire Emblem. If we were to get any third-party characters, who would you like to see? Uh, and then they made um, uh, they made two pictures of potential guests, which I'll also post in the video. Um, and, then, and then also, um, uh, I just want to say before we answer this question, uh, I, I, I've gotten this from other people too, but I just remember this one offhand. So multiple people have asked me this but um if we don't read someone's email on an episode um we probably we haven't ignored you yes we we, just don't have enough time we we don't have enough time and we didn't get to it people email us a lot and we can only do like five or six an average episode actually we're doing the mailbag episode because it's starting to get full and we need to get through these um (laughs) So if we don't if we don't answer the email like the episode right after you send it, it's probably we're we're getting to it. So don't worry. Um, a few people have. Uh, it's not just John that has asked this. It's been quite a few people. So don't worry. Your emails are safe. Yes. Um. Anyways, third party characters we'd like to see as demons. Wait, uh, sorry, Virgil. I didn't answer the first question. <laughs> Virgil. <laughs> oh. Oh, did we skip you? I'm sorry. I feel bad Yeah, it's now. okay. It's okay. It's just the new Flash kind of came suddenly. So oh, yeah. Understandable. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Thanks, Katsu. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I was just I was just on Twitter, and I saw a retweet from Gematsu. Okay. Yeah. 
But the whole coexisting and demon world similar? I believe the whole demon world is similar, what with parallel universes and all that. And coexisting, I've inter- entertained this the scenario with house spirit demons helping out around the house and such. Oh, that'd be awesome. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Does that Mara wake you up and tell you to go to school every day? Yeah, that's not what I would use Mara for, but okay. More like <laughs> Ikimura or Pixies helping around the house more than Mara. <laughs> I, would, I would like hire like five poltergeists just to lift me everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Sooner or later, I'll need more than five. I would like to ride my Minotaur to school. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> That'd be scary. Just like, like a bike rack, and then there's just a giant ass Minotaur, like, leashed to the bike rack. <laughs> That's and what I want. There's two there, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Um, third party question now. Um, I don't know for third party people. Like, I already said Virgil. Yeah. I like that one. Okay. Um, I don't know. I think we've had enough DMC. Um, oh, man, like, something really out there, like Tupac or some Morrigan. shit. Morrigan. Morrigan would Dark work. Song. Morrigan would work. Yes. All right. Fit in uh, with the no, I want a rapper of some sort, just like Eminem or something. Oh, Eminem just released Sweet that. Dog. Eminem just released that song called Rap God. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, oh. Maybe. I'm just throwing it out there. Maybe that's related to SMT. God. Mm-hmm. I'm an, Eminem confirmed as the final boss of SMT5. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's voiced by himself. The ba- the background music for that fight would probably be glorious. Would be, it would be a it would be a Shoji Meguro remix of Rap God. <laughs> I, I was gonna go for a rap battle between Lotus Juice and Eminem, but okay. Um, Velvet Blue, what third party character would you like to see? Or did you also say Virgil? Um, no, I actually was entertaining the thought of the Tails characters crossing over, you know? That'd be cool. Lloyd. Just have Lloyd yeah, in just there. Yeah, imagine Snark Team Jade from Abyss and Anita from Vesperia just dealing with demons and such. <laughs> Good fun. Dealing with demons? Lloyd will probably cut them all down. Jade will strike conversation. <laughs> he will yeah. strike intelligent conversation. Well, he might even cause the... Lucifer to bend on his knees or something. <laughs> go after God himself. <laughs> He'd be the, be the best demon negotiator the world has yeah, ever seen. Totally. <laughs> uh, well, for me, I guess I would probably say Frank West. <laughs> so he could, like, cover wars. In like hell, <laughs> yes. <Demonic> <laughs> Only if he wears the Mega Man costume. While wearing a Mega Man costume, using chainsaws as weapons. <laughs> that would be awesome. Like his helicopter crashes in the middle of like the vortex world or something. <laughs> He's hanging out <laughs> with Flynn. <laughs> Hell yeah! Maybe taking pictures of Lilith or Lilum. Angel. Probably. <laughs> oh my god. Yes. Um, okay. I think I think that is it. Thank you, John, for emailing us and keep running that SMT Devil Summoner Soul Hackers Facebook page. That's pretty cool. Um, okay, so this is from Samail, um, who also needs to work on their spelling for the COS wiki. Shame, shame. Um, just throwing that out there. Anyways, uh, they say, Dear Roz and Katsu, a non-existent slash existent guest. More like existent guests, plural. Oh, I'm a ghost. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Um, confirmed solid, go- solid ghost. <laughs> um, it is feeling very lonely on the chaos side, seeing as how I am the only one except for Yamato, but he flip flopped to neutral like a true politician. Uh, so I was wondering if all the versions of uh, put any demon here except Mastema fought, which one would win? Also, what is your favorite version of a place uh, you fuse demons, and what game is it from? So basically, what's their favorite way to fuse demons, and if there's like a free-for-all battle between all the forms of a different demon, who would win? Um, I don't know. What like I, I'm having trouble envisioning various demons of different versions fighting in my head. There's regular Lucifer and SMT4 Lucifer. 
Yeah, there's that. Mm. Well, I think we can, like... we can all say safely that the Demi Kids version of whatever is probably going to lose first. <laughs> <And Eddie. laughs> the Demi Kids version of Merkaba? Yeah. That would be a great fight. Demi Kids Merkaba versus SFT4 Merkaba. I have a feeling that Demi Kids Merkaba might win, though. Mm, okay. <laughs> he was he was the OG. He was there first. That's true. Might have been able to grind longer. Um, I'm yeah, just, exactly. I'm, I'm not even going to go with that question because I just I can't think of anything. <laughs> um, Me neither. Let's see. Yeah. But um, favorite fusion place? Um, I don't know. Maybe that. Uh, what's that one place called? The Church of Darkness. The damn, I don't remember that place's name. The Temple of the place where the sun isn't. Someone help me out here. Um, I got no idea. Yeah, I, I don't like know. the demon summon. I like the demon summoning app in digital. I mean, not digital. Devil Saga, Devil Survivor. Hmm. That's my man. I just really wish I could think of that place. Like, I think mm-hmm. I think there's a podcast about it somewhere. I don't know. Just, just skip me, um, Velvet Blue. You can go. Uh, honestly, I'm tied between the Cathedral of Shadows. Oh, and that's Del- it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> How could you get your own <laughs> podcast name? What's wrong with you? That was a joke. <laughs> you deserve that. Better be a joke. That better be a joke. That was a joke. That better be a joke. That was the worst joke ever. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. You didn't get the fake confusion in my voice. Anyways, carry on, Bill. Actually, I kind of caught that. Actually. Okay, I hope. I hope you did. <laughs> anyway, carry on. <laughs> um. Mm. Said so Cathedral of Shadows, or and then you cut off. Or Velvet Room. Oh, okay. The Velvet Room. Velvet Room is well, classy. Okay. Yes, the yeah, Velvet Room is Thor's version. <laughs> Uh, for me, I like the app in SMT4, because it's kind of silly looking. Yes. But it looks very convenient, so I'm yeah. down with that. You know, I like SMT4's uh, Devil Survivor and Personas. All right, so that answers that. Thank you, Samael. Um, This one is from Francis, and they ask... Uh, hey guys, love the podcast. Have either of you heard of Machin X for the Dreamcast? It's a great game with many SMT elements, including the same art design. Do you think this game could be a possible source for future entries in the series, i.e. hack and slash action based, or not? Um, not sure how familiar you, you are with this game. It's kind of obscure. Uh, keep up the good work. We will. Um, I don't know anything about this game other than Kanako does the... I've never heard of it. Uh, it it's here. it's made by, I'm pretty sure it's made by Atlas as well, and Kanako did the art style for it, and apparently there's it was, like it's made by Sega. Oh really? Okay. I should know, but I know it's developed by Atlas, published by Sega. Never mind. Uh-oh. And there it is. That's where it all began. Sega and Atlas. <laughs> That's where it all began. They were BFFs. <laughs> um, I have no clue. I've never heard of this, so something tells me. It doesn't have much influence anymore. <laughs> um, I don't. It doesn't sound like I've never heard like recently of a game in that series coming out. I might need to check these out and play them now. But yeah, I'm looking at the wiki page for it. It looks pretty cool. Um, it's a hack and slash. It sounds like first person slasher. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I have a Dreamcast laying around. I should play this. Hmm. If only I had a Dreamcast, but I don't. Um, let's see. Um, this is a question from... Oh, thank thank you, by the way, for that, Francis. Now now I need to play that. Curses. <laughs> um, this is a question from Tatsuma. Uh, the main question is, uh, other genres you could see Mega Ten games go into, or on the flip side, genres you can't see Mega Ten go into? Uh, sorry if this question has been already asked. Um, I'm not sure if it has. Oh, and also, apparently we forgot to mention featuring Dante from Devil May Cry in a, a podcast episode 9, and they were disappointed. Well, I'm oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let's see. What what genres 
we can and can't see Mega Ten going into. First person shooters, we can definitely see them going into that, just shooting up demons. If they did cool. something, if they did something like Doom, I could totally see it. I think people would be pissed off, but I could t- totally see it working. I would yeah. like to see it as, from like a remake of Strange Journey. Oh, that'd be cool. That, oh, that would be so sick. Because you have a reason for the HUD then as well, because you're yeah, yeah. the Demonica. True. Um, mm, what, what else? What can't they do? A go karting spinoff. Go karting. That would never work. Shin Megami Kart Racing. Exactly. <laughs> Too many characters for sure. Um, could work, couldn't work. Um, they listed as something that wouldn't work. Um, real time strategy. Um, haven't they done real time strategy too. before? I don't think so. They did. I don't think they did. No, they, they did, did turn based. Done, obviously, yeah. they've done turn based. I think. I think if you had like a thing where you used instead of humans, you used demons. I think real time strategy could work. But yeah. then again, Atlas hasn't really been known for ever making RTSs, I don't think. So, yeah. Um, and also, what was that? Like, RPGs that turn into RTSs usually don't work. Like, I know there was, like, two games that have tried that, and it just flat out didn't work. I think one of them was a mana game. And, like, they tried making, like, some RTS for, like, the DS, and it just sucked. So, it was kind of a bad <laughs> track record for RPGs turning into RTSs, so maybe not, but... yeah. I I don't know uh, other genres. I can't think of any off the top of my head right now. They've already done they've already done H games before, so yeah. Oh God, really? Yeah, Majin. <laughs> I think it was Majin Tensei. Oh no, no, getting Megami Tensei. That yeah, getting that, Megami Tensei. Yes, that's yeah, right. That. That's right. They they did do that. So they have delved <laughs> into that territory before. So. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Personally, I can see it going into hack and slash. Yes, I agree. But then again, they did with yeah. Rido, didn't they? Uh, yeah. Well, it's it's more of an action RPG, but yeah, they they could make it into a hack and slash. I feel. But yeah, Rido is an action RPG. Hmm. I see. Hmm. Thing uh, that they can't. At first, I was thinking they can't do it in first person, but then you mentioned Strange Journey having a reason for the HUD. Yeah. Mm. So hard to choose, really. Um. Hmm. Maybe. I think we're. I think we're good on that one. Oh wait! Oh. I can't see a rhythm game for sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Shin Megami. So weird. Shin Megami Move. Shin Megami Groove. Dance Dance Revolution Persona Edition. Yes. Yeah, they could, Diva, Shin Megami Tensei. They could they could make a guitar hero and, and the only song is that one band scene from Persona 4 Golden. <laughs> <laughs> What's that song called again? True Story or something? Yeah, True Story. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's the only song and it's like a minute long. But it, of course it's a $60 game. Yeah. And the sad part is everyone listening to this is probably buy it. <laughs> yeah. Um anyways, uh, thank you, Tatsuma, for the question. Um, this one is from Sivippo. Best Hi, emailer. Sivippo. Um, the best emailer. Yes, of course. Um, they ask, how do you feel about Devil Children slash Demi Kids? Uh, are they good games on their own merits? Um, and just er, Okay, carry on. Yeah. They're okay. Like, Demi Kids is... It's all right. It's not... It's not good. It's okay. Pretty much it for what it tries to be i think it's okay in its own right but like it's it's pretty subpar compared to the other mega 10 games uh it tries to be nothing more than a pokemon like cash in type game yeah and it succeeds at doing that but that it overall it's not too fun to play so yeah, it's not that great have either of you played demi kids uh, uh, no. i played a bit of it it, it was okay yeah. That's about it. Like, yeah, like, that. that's, like, that's kind of the feeling with those games. It's like, this isn't bad, it's just not very Good. fun. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're, 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 like, the definition of average games. Um, anyways, um, then, second question is, in just about every long-running video game franchise, there is that one, or possibly more, uh, games that considered the black sheep of the series, such as Final Fantasy II. Uh, what... 
What is slash are the black sheep of the Mega Ten franchise and why? Ooh. Oh, Giten Megami Tensei, obviously. Yeah. That's a, yeah. Um, Let's see. A more recent black sheep? Hmm. I guess if you mm. count Catherine, that, but aside... That's from... not Mega yeah people debate people debate if it is or not but um suddenly suddenly you put Catherine in one of the timelines and then everything makes sense uh (laughs) (laughs) jesus um people um people are gonna like crucify me for this but uh once you think about it in terms of only mainline games nocturne is a black sheep it's the only one that's in like third person third person it has it doesn't have the uh, traditional law chaos neutral. It's the only one that wasn't first released on a Nintendo console. Yeah. Um. Like I don't know because the few that have been Black Sheep kind of like made their own little spin-off series. Like you could say Devil Summoner is kind of a Black Sheep when that came out, but then it made the Devil Summoner subseries. Same with Persona. So like. Maybe Jack Brothers, too? <laughs> <laughs> Jack Bros. I don't know. Like, Any other opinions on this? Uh, sure. I guess Persona 3 and 4, like you said, kind of black sheepish, but obviously it became its own thing, so oh, yeah, it doesn't definitely. really count, you know? So, I don't know. I think SMT is just able to avoid black sheep and just make his own franchise right after that yeah yeah you have that one odd spinoff and then people like it and then they just make it into a sub series <laughs> yeah that's yeah. good <laughs> exactly um True. guess we'll move on to the third then uh you mentioned i don't know uh which one of us probably both uh we mentioned that SMT spinoffs did their own thing that separates them from the mainline SMT games, such as the Persona diving into Japanese anime style. What do other spinoffs do that's different? I got this. So, um, if we want to go historically, Devil Summoner, the main reason Devil Summoner was a spinoff was because it took place in the modern day and it never had an apocalypse. And also it was like a murder mystery. So that's what made that different. Uh, and the detective style mystery thriller type thing is in all the Devil Summoner games. So that's where that comes in. Uh, can be a little hard to see now because they appear really similar to mainline games, at least the first two do, just looking back on them. Mm-hmm. Um, Persona has the focus on psychology and more of an emotional character driven plot. Uh, yeah. See, what other things am I forgetting? Devil Survivor obviously has the survival and fall of civilization aspect focused on more. I think that's about it. No, that's about it. Okay, I nailed that. 10 out of 10. Would listen to Perfect. myself again. Five golden letters. That's seven golden letters. Nope, no, five. Five. It's seven. You got that's that's the that's the joke. That's the part. Of, that's the joke. Seven no, golden that's... letters. Watch more Marvel, anyways. Yeah, you need to watch. <laughs> um, you you say as you keep trying to get me into plays blue in Persona Four Arena. <laughs> um, let's see. Hmm. Okay. So thank you, Jordan, for those. Or wait, no, shoot. Skipped him. No, thank you, Savippo, for those questions. I almost jumped the gun there. Okay, so this one is from Jordan, and Jordan wants to ask two questions. Um, first, who is your favorite, or who are your favorite characters from Devil Survivor 2? Second, what route do you usually follow when starting a new SMT game? Um, favorite characters from Devil Survivor 2? Oh, man, I like all of them pretty much, but um, if I had to choose three, Joe. yeah, if I had to choose three, <laughs> which is a lot, um, I really like Eo, Makoto, and Joe. Hmm. I'd have to say go with Jungle, uh, Fumi, and Hinako. Hinako? Yeah. Let's see. Mine will have to be Joe, um, Joe, Yamato, and Joe, Yamato, and Makoto. It's like I like how uh, Yamato was portrayed in the games much more than the anime. Yeah. Because 
in the games he wasn't he wasn't some big antagonist like how they made him out to be in the anime yeah he was a lot more he was a lot more down to earth and realistic and if not a bit could, of a douchebag yeah his his points were very validated and all that stuff and like you could he like I like the dynamic between you and Yamato much, much better than how they portrayed any anime. It was just so... Ew. <laughs> Solid Miss, have you played Devil Survivor 2? Uh, no, I hadn't. I only watched a, like a few episodes and then I stopped. Okay. As so you, as I don't you, have much of an opinion. As you should, because that anime is not very great. Garbage. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll play Devil Survivor 2 when the remake comes out. Yeah, that's what I'd recommend too. There's no point in getting the original now. Yeah. yeah, just get break right. Like watching the anime after Keita died. <laughs> Let's see. Aw, oh, poor Keita. I know. <laughs> he got five then, minutes of screen time. I thought that was hilarious. Five minutes of screen times died, and then disappeared from the ending. And he was literally <laughs> like, I like how they saved him and then kill him off anyways. Uh, like I literally uh, laughed. Which totally sucked. <laughs> um. Okay, so this one is from Alcidus, and this is written in. All, this is written in all caps. Sup, my fellow SMT men. Except we have a woman this episode. Thanks, <laughs> Alcidus. Um, well, he didn't know. <laughs> he should have. <laughs> he should have. I I expect all of our emailers to be psychic, every single one of them. <laughs> um, we're going on a strike. We're not going to take this anymore from Atlas. We need more remakes, less Persona, and better working conditions. For the love of Metatron, we'll stand up to these Persona games and let out or, and let out tradition. Um, strike, 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 strike. Um, okay? <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. Me neither. Uh, cool. <laughs> 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 That was definitely I... an email that we read. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah. More remakes, less persona. I don't know. Like, I don't care enough. Cool. Yeah. I, 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 I really don't. I, I really don't care. Yeah. Sure. Okay, I'm happy. As long as it's good. The final product. Yeah. As long as it's as enjoyable. As long as the final product is high quality material, then I'll be fine. If they just make some really garbage cash in then I'd be pretty pissed. Yeah, as long as it's engaging, I'm okay for it. Like, Atlas knows they're just milking Persona, but they keep making the game so good. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. It's okay. not like Capcom milking, where they keep re- releasing subpar products. Yeah. I heard I heard they've been better with that recently. Like I heard Dragon's Dogma, Dark Arisen or whatever was apparently really good. Yeah. For a That game is really good. I actually have it. Okay. Um like Ultra Street Fighter 4 looks promising. Uh hopefully yes, I I I hope they're done with the milking of stuff and not making it good because that would just be bad. Um if it's they not under lesson now, they're almost out of business. Uh, apparently, right. apparently, Monster Hunter really helped out with that, actually. So, yeah. hmm. like some some of the like franchises that uh, Capcom has does well. Like, in my opinion, Dragon's Dogma, Monster Hunter, the fighting games, etc. But like, if they like try to stray away from that, that's like when things start looking bad. Like Resident Evil, for example. Oh God, fuck that game. <laughs> yeah, they like... stray stray away from the formula slightly, and then and then it just turns out to be very horrible. Didn't Lost Planet yeah. three come out this year or something? Yeah, yeah. no one cares about the Lost Planet. Exactly. Series. I'm like the when two came out, I was like, why did they make a second one? And then three came out, and I'm like, what the fuck are they doing? No one plays these. <laughs> no one plays these games. Oh. Yeah, so I don't know. It kind of I think it just depends on who's working on it. And, like, if they get fucked up or not. Yeah. Um, so, thank you for that there question, Alcidus. <laughs> and, and have fun going on strike. Um, I expect to see you in front of Atlas headquarters with a tent, all stocked up for strike. Anyways, uh, this one's from Ricardo. They say, hey there, Katsu and Razin, and our two guests. Hmm. Uh, mm. uh, this is Rick. I remember you saying that in terms of the demons that exist in the SMT franchise, that Atlas has pretty much covered all the mythologies and their entities. 
Uh, I am aware that this would be undoable due to the sheer controversy, but... <laughs> oh, God. Uh, but what do you think about adding a Messiah clan of demons? This clan would be composed of notable messiahs from different mythologies, such as Jesus, Moses, Muhammad, and such. <laughs> um, he goes on to add... I'd be cool with that. I'd be cool with that, too, but... Yeah. For, for this reason, uh, which he literally lists right after that, he says, of course everyone would flip the fuck out if you were able to kill Jesus in a video game, and and if they were to call him a demon. Uh, and personally, I think it'd be... Uh, I think that making Jesus a lawful exorcist badass would be cool as hell. Uh, <laughs> he would like to hear our thoughts on this. Uh, thank you, and have an amazing day. Thank you. Um, thank you. I think it would be cool to have Jesus as a demon, yeah. but at the same time, you know, backlash. Yeah. Well, True. people get mad. Like, you're not allowed to, like, depict Muhammad in anything in Islam. So yeah. you can't have him in a video game without pissing a bunch of people off, too. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I know it will never happen, but that I would I would be down for it. Yeah. 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 It'll happen, <laughs> but not in, this, not in this lifetime. I wouldn't mind having Jesus and or Moses. I understand the whole Muhammad because of the whole religion thing rules. But it didn't stop them from putting God as the boss for SMT2, did it? No, but like, I think they got away with that more so because, like, they made it, it was, generic enough yeah, so they made, that it was, like, the Abrahamic God and it wasn't specifically Christian, Islamic, mm-hmm. or. And it was, and Jewish. the game was Japan only. And Japan um, doesn't care about. Japan has a. Yeah, Japan has a completely different view on religion than the Western world yeah. does. Especially the Abrahamic faiths. Like, yeah. That's kind of like when Evangelion was done there. Uh, they flat out, the art like art team flat out said they barely understood like the symbolism. Like they just threw it in to make it look cool. <laughs> yeah, they so, threw yeah. it in because it looked cool. Yeah, so <laughs> it, it, it's kind of hard. Because now that they're focusing more on an international fan base with Mega Ten, they really can't do stuff like that anymore, which yeah. kind of sucks because of how those games work. God, I can just imagine the shit fit of West Barrow Church getting a hold of SMT. I'm surprised there hasn't been something already. I know, right? Like, it's <laughs> been a good 20 years. Yeah. Um, yeah, true. Like Nocturne, you think something will happen during Nocturne time and Persona and yeah, nothing's happened yet. This is pretty strange. <laughs> They've been focusing all their hate on po- they were focusing too much of their hate on Pokemon to notice that hey, yeah. you can collect and fight demons in this. And just imagine yeah, yeah, yeah. In this series here, you can you can pal around with Lucifer and all this stuff, and you guys are focusing on Pokemon. <laughs> are you guys are you guys for real right now? <laughs> Yeah, I guess I can just SMT is just not popular. They get yeah. all PETA like they did with Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, I, I would I would love to see like the soccer moms that say like Pokemon causes you to like go to the devil or whatever, and then like give them like Nocturne. I think they would die. <laughs> like, <laughs> they, they would flat out. Cool. They'd they'd flat out like not believe that that thing was even like made or like someone could make it. They're like, no, it's too evil. Just flat it's out too evil. Have heart attack. <laughs> What you do is just splash holy water all over the, <laughs> all over the disc. <laughs> and then burn it to cleanse it with holy fire or something. The, <laughs> the Vatican distributes, like, crucifix memory cards for the PlayStation 2 for everyone to put in. So that yeah. it cleanses the PS2. <laughs> so that they can yeah, purify the consoles. <laughs> yes. And exercise Jack Frost or some shit like that. <laughs> They no, they yeah, they collect all of like the Jack Frost plushies that exist and like they like sacrifice them or like sacrifice just, like, them. Have a cleansing of the world of Jack Frost plushies. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's, like, it's like it's like a witch hunt except with the plushie, so no one cares. Like <laughs> I would really like to think someone has like a giant Jack Frost plushie and like just like way back in the day they're like have like a board with like stones that they're trying to get the Jack Frost plushie to like confess to being like a demon but since it's a plushie it can't talk so then like there's a guy that goes more weight and then like another guy adds a giant rock onto the thing until like the plushie is just like smushed <laughs> why won't you confess damn it <laughs> anyways that's enough for that email okay <laughs> thank you thank you ricardo um oh my god okay this one was sent from andrew uh 
then they say with many ways to go about negotiating with demons what options do you use the most often during the recruiting process imitating instruction equipment in persona 2 hmm i usually try being friendly um unless yeah. unless the demon because uh, usually when you talk to a demon, it has that little prompt, like, and they'll say something. If they seem kind of like that biker dude, like, confrontational type thing, I'll usually try to intimidate them. Otherwise, I always try being friendly first. Be nice and friendly. Cute and cuddly. Yes. Which I'm usually, not here to hurt you. Usually ends up with me being attacked, but still. I know there's sometimes when you say no a lot, the demon will end up joining you anyway. <laughs> So this is like about demon contracts and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, like when you negotiate okay. with... Yeah, you couldn't quite catch the question beforehand. When you negotiate <laughs> with demons to like recruit them, like how do you... Like do you... Are you usually friendly or like... Dick it? You yeah, tend to comply and go with the answers they would go for. Okay, yeah. I think that's how most people do it. Yeah. Uh, I'm usually an asshole. <laughs> and then when they ask me items, I just give them everything I have. That's the way to go about doing it. I know for a fact that um, in some of the older games, there were demons you flat out couldn't recruit, but they'd ask for items anyways and just never join you. Mm, what an I, asshole. I know. Which uh -huh. I, You're frustrating for first-time players. Yeah, I think that was only in SMT 1 and 2, or like the Super Nintendo games. I'm not sure. Um, but I remember hearing about that, and I'm like, wow, that just sucks. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, second question. Uh, since I have heard Rosin talk about TV tropes a couple of times, wow, I've made it that obvious. Uh, anyways, um, <laughs> what are your favorite tropes listed on that site that relates to gaming? Um, At, I like the Atlas trope. Yeah, the yeah, Atlas yes, exactly. Amazing. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Damn it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there, there, there is a list of like Atlas bosses and just how bullshit they are, and it's the best like thing ever. <laughs> Um, and then they had that quote that Aram Jabari said that is like Atlas US. It's like Atlas. Get off, get off on your <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is the best trope ever. Um, I can't believe I've made my love for TV tropes that that apparent. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. You know what? Well, why doesn't Cathedral of Shadows have a TV tropes page? Yo. Yeah. Make a TV trope for Cathedral of Shadows, everybody. <laughs> Cough, cough, wink, wink. <laughs> I, no, no, just, I, I enjoy no, this no, idea. I also like how we're a podcast of about 300 to 400 listeners, and we already have a subreddit, we have a wiki, we're going to have a TV Tropes page if someone actually goes about doing that. Like, we look a lot bigger than we actually are. <laughs> yes, we're that godly. I enjoy this. Um, do you two have any favorite tropes in regards to gaming? Uh, I can't think of any right now. Uh, let's see. I don't really have any favorite tropes, but if I had to choose two, I'd say uh, the uh, crowning moments of awesome and the crowning moments of heartwarming. All right. Yeah, those are those are usually listed by um by series, right? Like you can click on the top of the yeah. page for each of those. Yeah. Sometimes those are awesome to look at. Or heartwarming to look at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, thank you, Andrew, for your question. This one is uh, from someone who wants to remain anonymous. Uh, what is the possibility of doing an episode about reading SMT slash Persona fan fiction? Uh, um, uh, no. Do we want to get into this? No. Never. Wait. Okay, no. you know what? Fine, I'll, I'll, I'll admit to the fuck up. So... Literally the same group of people. <laughs> the, the, the night, I can't do it. Okay, literally the same group of people in the Skype call right now. The night before the FAP episode, we decided to record the bonus episode 10.5, where uh, I read fan fiction and we made fun of it. Um, this ended up with me um, realizing we weren't actually recording, and I had read about an hour or so of fan fiction, and none of yeah. it was recorded. And I looked like that a was, total that dumbass. Awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> um, so I, I think eventually me and Sparky are going to do that because Sparky wanted in on that if we ever did it. So, yeah, but trust me, we've tried. <laughs> <laughs> but MP3 Skype recorder said no. 
Denied. See, the worst part is I'm not sure if I just accidentally missed the record button or if, like, somehow the, the program decided to screw up on me because the program's been acting weird recently and I think I might need to reinstall it, but we are recording now, by the way, guys. Don't worry. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Looking at yes, it. Yes, we are, we are recording. <laughs> what's, the fi- what's the file size at right now? The file size is at... Um, 84,408 kilobytes. Oh, man. That's a lot. Yeah. So, uh, we've been going for a while, but um, thank you, Anonymous, for that question, and thank you for exposing my fraudulence when it comes to being a podcast host. Um, (laughs) Man, that has made me really paranoid every episode now, like, that we're going to record, because I keep looking at the recorder to make sure that I don't fuck up again, um, just because that was a traumatizing experience. Anyways... (laughs) Um, this is from, oh my, uh, I think it's H-U-Y-N-H, so I think it's Hyun? Hume? Hyun? Hyun? Okay. Uh, oh, well, in the email they say, uh, if you can't pronounce their name, go with, uh, Gino Cross. Okay, I'll just call you Gino Cross. Tell, tell us your, yeah. tell us your, uh, pron- pronunciation for that name, though. I'm actually legitimately curious. Um. Will you be answering emailed questions during the fab? Oh, well, we were going to, but we kind of ran into, like, time issues and yeah. stuff, so we didn't. Um, but now we can answer your email question now. Um, not sh- They're not sure if this question has been asked before. What do we think SMT Cross Fire Emblem will play like? Um, also, do you think we will see demons as recruitable allies like we have seen in previous SMT games? Uh, hmm. And do you think... Well... Okay. Yep. Oh, answer. Well, um, say that last question first. Uh, uh, do you think we'll see returning mechanics such as the Megatama system used in Nocturne? All right. Um. Well, since both since Atlas has knowledge in strategy RPGs, chances are the crossover is going to be a strategy RPG. Um, yeah. Recruitable demons? I'm not entirely sure. Well, demons might only be enemies, and we only get to control the SNT and Fire Emblem characters, but we'll see. Yeah, I can't tell. Um, it's too early to call. I really, yeah, I. We, yeah, we've barely gotten any news since the reveal. <laughs> All we know is that it takes place in Tokyo. Yeah. Um, either of you think we're going to see any returning mechanics or credible demons? Well, I'm not too sure. Uh, I think the game will probably play like double survivor just to make it like fair because the strategy rpg and it's supposed to be in tokyo yeah and yeah so and recruitable demon i think probably at least i would like so whereas like you know one unit is one character from an smt or fire emblem and they two have like demons. two demons or whatever yeah i would like that that's what i want to see um and like make it like a huge map like project x zone or something <laughs> Let's see. And then they say, um, sorry they couldn't join in the FAP due to different time zones. They're in Australia. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that would have been really late for you yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> um Thank thank you, Gino Cross. And please please do uh somehow tell me that, that pronunciation for your first name, because I'm curious. I, I I like knowing all these different names. I like knowing things. Yeah, I like knowing things. Um <laughs> So, uh, this email is from the white. Um, oh, the white. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh no. <laughs> they say oh, no. It'd be a bad ending. <laughs> they say, "Are you ready for your podcast to be engulfed by nothingness and become void of pain and suffering?" Uh, you know what they say: if you ain't white, you ain't right. Oh God. <laughs> oh no. They went there. <laughs> I never thought I would have to read those words on an email for this <laughs> podcast, but I just did. Um, the question is. Uh, uh, let's see. The question us white have for you is: If you were sucked into an abyss and were forced to experience a game from the SMT universe minus Persona, which game would you choose? Um, probably SMT. SMT Cross Fire Emblem, but the game's not out yet. Okay. Um, <laughs> just to get that insider glimpse. Yes, just to get the insider glimpse. Yeah, I'll go with that. Shin Megami Tensei Cross Fire Emblem, so I can know what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> and then leak it on the podcast, and then Atlas will give us yes. a cease and desist letter. And then our podcast will become nothing. Oh, see, we exposed their plan <laughs> before co- they even could. Yeah. 
Um, hmm, that's that's tough because they're all pretty depressing. Even like Demi Kids, like yeah. people say like <laughs> Demi Kids is for like kids and stuff, but then like the but it's pl- not. the premise is like, hey, there's a lot of time portals and crap opening up, and it's fucking with the universe, and everything is gonna like be eaten by a black hole. And it's like, well, I don't want to live here, so. I don't know what I would yeah. like. What would I want to um, experience? Like maybe Jack Brothers because it seems not bad. <laughs> yeah, you could probably be a Jack bro. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. For myself, I'm sticking to my guns with the uh, Doctor. Oh God, have fun with that. Uh, I will. Like SMT four. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You guys are crazy. So long as Flynn chooses the neutral. <laughs> so long as Flynn chooses the neutral ending, you be okay. So long as me and Katsu aren't Walter and Jonathan or something, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you for that question. But with the advent, with oh. with the advent of the whites on our podcast, I wonder how the other demons are going to react. <sighs> I don't know. You know, I, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty surprised our podcast has become this nexus of smt demon role players to well, come together it is it is the, it is the cathedral of shadows where demons gather after all yeah true and i'll never forget that name again no matter how shitty the joke anyways <laughs> um this one uh thank you the white all five of you yes um, have fun with your plan but please don't succeed because that would just be bad. Um, okay, so this is from Pyro. Uh, what is the scariest thing that happened to you in an SMT game, including Persona? Uh, the scariest thing that happened to me was in Persona 4, I beat Amino Sagiri and got, I think that's how you pronounce that, and got the somewhat good ending, and the next day I walked into the bus stop to school and it was foggy out. I thought the steamy Death Star was after me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hmm. Pretty sure this question was answered already, but I can't even. Well, we talked about like if I think we could. T- I think we were talking about if a survival horror per, uh, SMT would work. I don't think we talked about scariest moment in SMT. I could be wrong though. Yeah. Mm. Like scariest. There hasn't been any. There hasn't been any moments in SMT that really scared me per se. There is that one. Uh, or. Um, there's the one side mission in SMT four where you're being chased by Seth. Oh yeah. Oh oh oh! That's that, that part in um, Digital Devil Saga where you're being chased by that one guy, but that one demon in, in the prison. Okay. Oh yeah. That that um that part where you gotta run away from I forget what the demon's name is, but it's like a horse head. It's got a skeleton body. I could not tell you. <laughs> um, <laughs> too spooky. Um. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to go with the side mission where you're being chased while carrying Osiris' coffin because that demon is OP as fuck. <laughs> I can't think of anything, so... Neither can I, really. Yeah, there, there's never a point where, like, SMT gets, like, too scary or horrific. Too spooky. Yes, too spooky. The only thing horrific is when it gets really hard and you start crying about how hard it is. Yeah. Yeah, you're but, close to death when you're beating a hard boss. But like being legitimately scared of like during the gameplay or like story or whatever, not really. <laughs> oh my god, we only have like Let's see hold on. Oh, oh. That's the name of the demon. The demon's name is Kumbanda. That's the name of the demon from S N T four. I got a picture of him right here. I mean not from S N T four, but from uh, Digital, Digital Level Saga. Also. Yeah. Okay, so we have three more emails. Wow, we have run the three gauntlet. Um, thank you, Pyro, for that question. This yes, one thank is you. this one is from Jordan. Uh, title pretty much speaks for itself. Oh, uh, it's um, do you prefer Persona One on the PSP or the PS One, and which do we think has a better soundtrack? Uh, um, soundtrack probably PSP, even though it is like Englishy pop. Like, I just didn't really care English-y for the Englishy J pop. I didn't care for the PS1 soundtrack, so I think the PSP one is slightly better. Um, but other than like music, uh, definitely PSP. Yeah. 
Because uh, it is an enhanced here. ports. They fixed a lot of problems that were in the original Persona. Like the localization. Um, the localization is now true to the Japanese version. <laughs> yeah. At last. Sorry, Black Mark. <laughs> well, I've never played Persona 1, so I can't really put my opinion on it. <laughs> to be... We should... To be completely yeah. honest, you don't want to. Um, yeah, you really don't want to play Persona 1. I'm sure Just watch that... a Let's Play of it on yeah. YouTube. I'm sure there's going to be people flipping a shit down below, but like, I, I literally have talked to nobody personally that has liked Persona 1. <laughs> like, <laughs> no one. Um, Everyone either likes Persona 2, 3, or 4. Exactly. Talit Abyss, do you have anything to weigh in on this issue? Uh... I guess PSP from some of the songs I've heard, but don't know much about Persona 1, so... All right. Um, <laughs> this one is this one is from Mastema. Mast- oh, thank you, by the way, for that thank you. question. Uh, Jordan, uh, Mastema asks, would you play a game where you play as me? I'd play a game um, where you play as Mastema. Yeah, I'd like to see where how... How it will work out? I definitely play a game with Matt with Massimo as the protagonist. Only if he is like wisecracking the entire way through. Yeah. <laughs> Just wisecracking and doing everything his own way. <laughs> <laughs> as long as we get to uh, usurp Yahweh at the end of the game. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I'll play. Uh, um. Let's see, playing as Mastema. Honestly, I couldn't care less. <laughs> yeah. Understandable. Um, then, th- thank you, Mastema, for your odd emails and <laughs> yeah, that, the emails that email. And... Yeah. Just being Mastema. Um, okay, this one, and our final email is from Case Corps. Uh, good, oh, cool. good buddy. Um, one, what is your favorite Mega Ten game that you've actually played enough to have an opinion about? This disqualifies Legendary Ones. Oh wait, no. What is your least favorite Mega Ten game that you've actually played enough to have an opinion about? This disqualifies Legendary Ones like SMT Nine or Jack Brothers. I actually, heard Jack Brothers uh, isn't too bad. It's just different. Um, yeah. Persona One. <laughs> Persona One. That one. That game is pretty awful. Very dated. Very bare bones. Uh, the first person par- aspect of the game is really strange. Like, yeah, I get it. First person, classic SMT, but like, the first person aspect was during the school sections of the game, I believe. Yeah. It was just really weird. And it was like this weird, like, 3D ish modeling stuff that didn't feel like yeah, it worked. It was, just, it was 3D modeling and like, Whenever you had to turn to face a certain way, you had to like stop, turn, wait for the camera to turn there, and then keep walking. It yeah. was really strange. Well, I kind of like all the games of SMT that I played, so don't really have the least favorite. Uh, well, I didn't play too many of the bad ones, but uh, probably my least favorite so far is. Uh, I did not like Raido Kusanoha that much. Understandable. Like it, it, it put me to sleep. It's, it's, it's a very odd experience because like that's another game where I feel is just kind of average. But like, I think the plot kind of carries that game, and like if you're not invested in the plot, it's kind of hard to get through because the gameplay isn't very good in the first one. Yeah, I, I almost fell asleep. Like I would be so confused of what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, that's that's kind. Of, it's kind of hard to tell where you need to go, as well. With that, sometimes it feels like you need to kind of just talk to every NPC before you finally figure out where to go. Basic yeah. JRPG fundamentals: talk to every NPC. Yeah. I mean, like I could see like the appeal of it, but it wasn't for me. Let's see. Um, what are some of our favorite demons? Hands down, I think we've me and Katsu have got this. Got this yeah. So, what about you two? Yeah. Hmm. I like the Nados. Like not just Persona Three, like in SMT and stuff. Like I, I I've always liked the, the Nados. 
Bonatos. All right. Yeah. Oh, right. Um, honestly, my favorite hand down, hands down, is Kurihime, Ame no Uzume, and Saka. All right. Not bad. And then. All right. Final question: uh, What's in your SMT backlog? Oh God! So like, <sighs> I have. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have Strange Journey in my backlog. I have Yeah, I have Strange Journey. Um I downloaded Demi Kids, but I never really got started on it. And wow. I, I need to get that get, get on that. See, I, I I'm still at that awkward spot where like I'm still trying to figure out what save files to delete and would like just start over completely and which ones like to continue on from. So right now I'm gonna I I'm halfway through my third playthrough of SMT one. <laughs> um, I, I don't know anyone who has played SMT one that much, but um, after that, I plan on going to Nocturne and finally beating that. Um, just going to start fresh from that one. Then I have persona four. I'm not sure if I'm going to just keep going th- through that save. Cause I'm like 20 hours in or so. Um, or if I want to just start fresh on that too, I think I might start fresh. I, I'm leaning more towards that. But from there, I'm not sure, because I'm trying to I'm trying to separate the uh, the more classic games with like modern games in between, kind of to form a break, and I don't get tired of the dated gameplay, if that makes sense. Yeah. So. All right. Well, for myself, I have yet to finish Devil Survivor Two, even once, despite starting many playthroughs. <laughs> uh, Doctor and I've never finished either. Persona 3, I'm still on my first playthrough, and specifically FBS, and I think I'm almost done on that one. The only SMT I've really finished was Persona 4, and then there's the playthrough of Persona 4 Golden I've yet to go through. All right. All right. Yeah. So you could be quite a backlog. <laughs> <laughs> there's a All lot right. of SMT at the yeah, end of the yeah. day. So yeah. my backlog is pretty big. SMT one and two. Um, I need to be lawful and neutral for SMT four. I only did chaotic so far. Um, I always get to like this is like four times straight. Devil Survivor <laughs> one. I've always get to day six and stop playing. Uh, which... And then I delete my save file and then replay again and stop at day six again. Is there is there a specific event in day six that gives you trouble? Uh, not not really specific, but I just end up stopping like oh. somewhere around there because I play like another game or something. <laughs> and then I'm like, what's going on in the story again? Just delete it and play again. I don't know why I keep doing That's this. That's like right before the alignment choice too. Like yeah, yeah. like I never chose an alignment. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Devil Survivor two, Soul Hackers, and game I need to play. Um, I I want to beat the Rado Kuzunoha games, and yeah, I think that's it. Oh, I just realized the only um, the only handheld, or at least I I, I don't count the PSP games as handhelds because I emulate them because I'm like that. But um, the only handheld SMT game that I have to beat is um, Strange Journey. Then after that, it's all PC or all console. For me. Yeah, I need to finish Strange Journey as well. Game is long. <laughs> it is. Like it's a gr- it's, it's such a grind. It is. It really is. Oh my. And that's it. We're that's f- it for the emails? We're free. Yeah. We're free. Our, I, I think that was like twenty seven in our inbox that we just went through. Wow. Yeah, I know, nice. right? This podcast is over is like nearly two hours long. Holy shit, are you <laughs> No. It's nearly. It's oh my nearly. God. Okay. So not as long as the Sir Lionheart episode. But almost. Yeah. We were getting almost. There. So this uh see, you know what the pod uh, the podcast playlist had this perfect thing going on where it was thirteen episodes or, or there was thirteen videos in the thing and it was thirteen hours long. Now this is gonna fuck everything up again. Oh man. Oh well. Whatever. Yeah. All right. That's all for today, everyone. Okay, bye. Make that TV Tropes page. Bye. See ya. Bye, B.